Welcome to another edition of Strange New Pod. I am your fleet admiral and host, Julian Brown, alongside the best bridge crew this side of the Krenum, still fucking around with time in the worst possible way. Fuck those guys. Um, yeah, the Krenum rearing their ugly heads again. Uh, Vice Admiral, Eric, uh, sorry, Vice Admiral Eric is here, wishing that uh, he had the Krenum bug to send him into a loop where his uh, ice cream bar rebuilds itself. Uh, yeah, every uh, 14 minutes. Captain Hawk is here. Yeah, he, he liked it. Captain Hawk is here hoping Michael uh, didn't steal the field disruptor fluid from the holodeck that keeps his image stable because you went sideways, upside down, disappeared for a good five minutes pre-show. Yeah. So the jury is still out, sir. Daddy uh, needs his medicine. Daddy needs his medicine. <laughs> Subcommander Giraffe is here wondering whether she loves or hates the uh, Michael on Michael fighting and i know that look i know that look and finally mc is here wondering if the krenum had figured out how to make work uh things and hold on technical What's difficulties happening? my system is doing its daily doesn't like has my a time uh, bug. Has i have a time no bug. i have the no. time bug sorry guys it's my daily <laughs> my system wants to be a pain in the ass uh, to my to my computer uh yeah subcommanders draft oh no sorry you already did draft uh Do where me am again. I? no no <laughs> you're no, at no. me and finally mc is here wondering if the credit have figured out how to make one of those uh time buggy things hop time and other dimensions you know what i'm getting at did you i do. get demoted did i did i demote you yeah. You know, oh, I didn't, you have no rank, rank at all. I just didn't Damn. say your rank. No, you don't get a rank today. You're you're back to specialist because you time hopped. Sorry. Uh, time hopped, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, Commander MC. <laughs> Commander MC. Uh, welcome back, guys. How are we doing? We're doing great. I'm uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to the other fandom. So I had a. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you mean is you're going to the dark side. I'm doing to oh. the. I'm going to the dark side. Yes, I'm having. Uh, I had a blast at Star Wars night at Disneyland. I encourage everybody who's a nerd to go to Disneyland this way because this is the way. Mm. Just saying that. I loved your cosplay. It's so, so good. So it was so much. good. So so. Much. Your makeup was amazing. Like I'm amazing. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about it. Um now, when when are the X-Men gonna show up at Disney? They have the rights. Soon. <sighs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, like, there, there's so many weird things with Marvel and Marvel Disney Land. and mm. other places. Yeah. It would be it's cool. All, I would it talk would about cool. it if this wasn't a, if this was like a <laughs> Marvel podcast. I lose everybody. And then nope. be, then we're still here anybody. be on the Albert Camp on the, the California Park. We can hear you. Mm -hmm. We the, the, can you, Julian is time hopping. Time hopping. Oh, he, he can figure things up and we'll just time. Airlock him. Well, <laughs> we're taking over the show. Should, should, should we? Un fucking real. No, we're we're good. My thing. I I might actually have to send this thing in to get repaired. Like the mm. USB port is fidgety. Mm. Um, it's a story for another day. Not important. Um, this week. This week. Michael and Rainer get caught in a um, Michael Burnham. This is your life time loop. Thanks to the, as I said before, fucking Krenum, um, because they did time shenanigan things during the temporal cold war. That's basically the episode and it's hella good. We're going to break it all down. 
But speaking of the word fuck. <laughs> on, <laughs> oh, my God. Our, you, I already show. counted. You said it already. I like think I said times. it like four times. Yeah. Uh, oh, email. Yeah. <laughs> So we're going to do a little bit of a PSA on the pod tonight because I think it's important. Um, Trouble. Yeah, you know, I just want to preface this by saying um, we're going to talk about a review that we got on the pod. And I want to preface it by saying that the review is actually a positive roof. Nice things to say about the pod. Four stars. I'm not doing this as a like. I don't want to take away like the drive or, you know, say reviewer from listening to our show. But I think that this review has had the unfortunate, I guess, what's the word I'm trying to say? Consequence. Uh, no, not consequence, but the unfortunate, it, it, it's something that keeps on popping up in our, in some of the reviews. Oh that we yeah. Get the it's pod. not the first time. It's not the first mm-hmm. time. Um, so, uh, I think it's important to address it. This isn't mean to meant to call anybody out or to, uh, drive anybody away, but I think it needs to be said. Um, first on the level of swearing on our show to start, our show is marked explicit on Spotify, Apple podcasts. Explicit generally means that you're going to say the word fuck more than once or twice. It's like an Eminem mm-hmm. album or a Dre album. We have that E there. <laughs> so like we know. Okay. Parental um, advisory. Literally that is your parental advisory. So there there's that. Um, <laughs> just like some <laughs> of your favorite music and uh, like, dude, some of my favorite rides on Peloton are marked explicit because like they throw F bombs at me to like motivate me like on the bike, you know, like things like that. Um, we swear, we swear a lot. It's just the fact of life. MC thought the review was about her. I thought the review was about me. You get the point, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was all about well, me. Well, <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're, we're getting, we're getting to that. Um, listen, if, if swearing isn't your jam and you know like i just mean our general audience not everybody in the chat tonight uh i i apologize but uh at the same time the e should tell you all that you need to know like that's why it's there uh from a personal standpoint i don't consider swearing swearing like i i just don't believe in the stigma that it's a bad thing i'm from queens then long island and i live in philly it's been in my vocabulary since i was five uh that i am completely unapologetic about sorry not sorry um this is where it gets to the unfortunate, basically the giraffe in the room. Giraffe is getting singled out in our reviews a lot, um, not only for profanity, but um, other things. But I also want to, before we go fully into the talking about giraffe, I don't think it's fair either to say that swearing dumbs down our conversations when some of the reviews that have been written said that our conversations are very educational and smart and well thought out. Um, I am fucking erudite as hell. Yeah, like um, that's like say, like going back. Erudite. That's like going back and saying like, <laughs> a, you know, like a Dre or you know, like an Eminem album or a, an album with lots of fucking swearing. As I Kendrick swear, Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar uh, is dumbed down just because they swear a lot. It's not. It's it's just, and I, I don't I don't think that that's fair. Um, Lastly, I, I do want to say we've had multiple reviews single out giraffe about her negative opinions and on shows like this on Disco and Strange New Worlds. I'll be the first person to say that I don't agree with a lot of what giraffe says. Hey, but, come on, not a lot. <laughs> a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> a like lot. MC and me, we're always. Oh, agreeing. no, I agree. I agree with you a ton, but I also disagree with you a ton. <laughs> but. I also think, and this is where I think this is really important. I also think that you have some of the most fair and balanced takes you'll find on any, and I will literally put this podcast up against any other fucking Star Trek podcast. Some of those fair and balanced takes you will find. I say that being critical and drastic critical thoughts are thought out really deep and really sometimes personal. And I appreciate that. I think it's very far removed from being negative. And I think mm-hmm. that's important to say. Um, so I stand by her. I'll stand by anyone else on our crew who who gets a bad review and get called out. I want to remind people when you write reviews, we read these, we see our names, and that sucks sometimes. So think about what you say when writing a review. And our PSA, go ahead, Giraffe. I, if you, yeah. I, the thing that cracks me up, that it's true, that every time there's a review and somebody's named, it's always me. 
<laughs> which cracks me up let's be honest uh because i feel that mc and myself we always agree on like i mean mostly agree right yeah and um but that's never her it's always me and i've been called so many names in reviews that i always said i want to do a podcast where i just read the reviews you know like <laughs> like, oh, like um, mean Jimmy tweets. Kimmel, i think they read the mean tweets yeah i <laughs> i want to do that i have that like water off a dog's back um i feel people have lost the habits of having disagreements and understanding that people can have other opinions. Uh, that's yeah. what having that's why having a diverse podcast is important because when everybody agrees mm-hmm. and everybody sees the same thing and everybody has the same backstories, same background, same, you know, ethnicity. Um, I'm a foreigner. I I grew up with a Muslim dad, I grew up with a white mom, I am a certain age, I see things differently. Um, but it cracks me up. It does. It be- it really makes me laugh that people are like, but her. And I'm going to add that the conversation started because I went on the French podcast and I got, they got a one mean review and that mean review was about me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, holy fuck, two on two. <laughs> um, Tara was saying that, oh my God, a new pod segment, mean reviews. And Giraffe and I have been talking about doing a mean reviews Patreon bonus pod for a really long time. So <laughs> yeah. hold your, hold, hold your beers. Um, listen, I, I, don't want to do something like this very often because I, I I I I don't like it. I actually think it feels a little bit icky. But it's happened enough in reviews that I think it was important to bring up. I'll also say I need to back up what Giraffe just said a hundred percent because I will also put our show. And this is not to talk any shit about any other Star Trek podcast, but I will still put this show up next to theirs and say we are probably one of the top three most diverse podcasts on in the Star Trek podcast whatever you want to call it. So it's thanks to Hawk. It's thanks to Hawk being a hologram. (laughs) And with that, (laughs) is that why Bowie's behind the edge? (laughs) Let's get into our thanks for our amazing patron collective at the ready room level and above Hawk, the hologram. It is on you today, sir. All right. So thank you once again to Simon Stager, Jeff Reeve, Mariah Gossett, Tallulah, Jen Stein, Tina Alexander, Joe Saparito, Noe Santos, Kang Wee, Takako Nagumo, Fernanda Nogales, SMK, Laura Linderman, Colin Davidson, Jesco, Michael Graham, Emily and Travis, Gildara, Cassie, Nay Nar, Nay Nar, A Nar. Hawk got that in one try. Who did it last <laughs> week, Eric? Job. It was me. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Maggie Light, Tyrannicillicus, Wayne Ritz, Skonavark, Sean, Jay Howard, Anna Yurdadon, Mahalani Uchiyama, Matt Harker, Davey Willett, Tara Pollen, Slope 74, Rude Parakeet, Joshua Miller, Adam Sanders, Eris Spengen, Lanky Guy, Aaron Volke, Carl Langoli, Michael Kwan, TJ, Mir, Caitlin, Elizabeth Dean, Jim McMahon, Connect dot. Sedano 317. Hookah hair. Three fries short. Cat tip. Tripping the reed alert over a pineapple. Sean Manning. Congressional baseball fan. Chris Waterman. RHCB. Martin Simpson. Seven Rasmussen. Anna F. Norman Buckwald. David Prime Hildebrand. Taryn J. Robinson. Anson Lex. A pro. That's right trouble on that one eric the red trouble and jamie roberts thank you no idea what's going on to be fair <laughs> when i didn't do nanar nanar anar i was laughing every time i fucked that up i know i know i know i know um <laughs> great job hawk uh, by the way people are getting an ad in the middle of our pod live that shouldn't be happening i'm really sorry we have ads now and i set them up for that not to happen so i don't know why it is uh it'll probably happen a couple more times on the pod probably then i will make sure it doesn't happen next week apologies 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 um bear with us on that one um we're getting great this capital. Small we're monetizing still learning thing. to be fair yep. so, sometimes it also happens if you're not subscribed to our channel so make sure you oh. are subscribed. Oh, in that case, subscribe to our channel. Oh, oh busted. <laughs> <laughs> Just sometimes, not all the time. 
Okay. Um, all right, folks. Let's do some news. Um, uh, the bad admirals. Oh yeah, sorry, bad admirals. Hi guys. Uh, you guys, you guys are bad admirals, our executive producers, our chadiches, Simon Steger, Commander Chris, the Chief Ernesto Castagna, Chris Waterman, and Tara Pollen. Tara Pollen, thanks for keeping our spore drive running, our time bugs running, and all of that jazz. Um, we love you. We love you. Um, news. We were talking about to, whether to bring this up off mic or not, and this is all we're going to say. The Lower Deck Strange New Worlds news. It's out there. It's public. Our thoughts are out there about it on social media. At least some of ours are. If you want to read it, go there. Obviously, the one thing I'll say is that the started as a Strange New Worlds podcast. It being renewed for season four is awesome. Can't wait to cover it more at the end. Um, Heroes and Villains. Um, something cool happened this week, so I'm going to turn news into an ad. Um, I'm wearing this shirt from Heroes and Villains tonight, uh, which is like this really cool storyboard enterprise shirt i love that shirt Ooh. so much yeah from the from the motion picture even though it's not the same enterprise i'm wearing that in honor of rod roddenberry finally getting back oh the original God. opening credit shooting model of the enterprise today which has been like a years long struggle to get back to the roddenberries um it finally happened with the help of the um of the yakutas which is just like mm. well it so, had disappeared for like 50 it years. had yeah Ooh. yeah yeah and it so, was found in um a storage container a storage yeah a storage container. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah on yeah. ebay and i was yeah. like ah, yeah yeah good job to everybody who found it oh yep so that happened so i'm wearing that shirt in honor you can find this on heroesvillains.com use our code strange to get 20 percent off your order they have awesome collections from like draft was talking about star wars x-men everything so check it out Let's move right along, unless anybody else has any other news. Slow news week. Uh, to the strange new loop. I said I was going to do the personal transporter, but I lied. Um, if you had the budget for this episode, you, you were the director, you were the showrunner, whatever you want to call yourself, and wanted to do a few more time jumps, what other points in Disco's history would you have liked to see? Chat, let us know your answers. MC, I saw your hand first. I already first. know what MC is going to say. <laughs> I <know. laughs> yeah, I think exactly everybody knows what I was going to say. say. <laughs> Go ahead. I want to see Ethan Peck as Spock interacting with yes. this place. It's was ridiculous so they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. They really missed the opportunity here, didn't they? I was like, get that motherfucker in the disco. <laughs> you like, like with, that, with the like, beard. Get him with a big beard. beard get him to walk through a corridor that is all i want that is all they see me personally i would want it to be like the spock like right before they start to get along again so it's like like really hostile spock but michael like actually does see him and is just like you know imagine oh, if they spock. just give each other like a dirty look and don't even say a word to each other that would have worked well i mean yeah well isn't like uh spock before talos or like at that moment still like not experiencing light uh, um time as linear yeah so it would have been a good cameo it would have been such mm -hmm. like interesting in the story because he's also like timey wimey before yeah. he gets to uh talos 4 right am i wrong yeah. yeah yeah so also just give it to me because ethan peck in discovery is chef's kiss yeah, that's the best Spock we had. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. they cut his bangs. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, I see you doing the. <laughs> they went back to the building of the disco and they yes. didn't have Philippa Giorgio show up. Like oh. Michael's mentor, like the first Philippa Giorgio. Like that mm -hmm. would have been amazing. Oh. Mm. That would have cost so much money. So yeah, much money. All of our gonna be <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna add, I think that there is this moment just before she jumps where she says goodbye to Sarek and Amanda in mm. season uh, two. And they're you know, they're on board of the discovery and yeah. they're gonna leave just before the battle of uh, control. And I think that would have been great that she had if she had seen mm. Amanda. Yeah, mm -hmm. and she's yeah. not as expensive as no, no, no. you. Yeah, no. <laughs> as Michelle. Yeah, <laughs> they both live in Toronto. <laughs> yeah, and they're both in Toronto. Yes, see, 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who else? Hawk. I know. I'm trying Hawk. to think of one, but like, really, they did a great job kind of covering <laughs> everything. You know, like well, we just keep on throwing out guest stars. Well, no, no, there's like, there's like also like there season two things, when yeah. Una is around. That could have been cool to mm -hmm. know that Una knows what happened, but never talked to anybody or something like that, or helped her. You know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I have such like a fucking trip that they could have done if they had gone back to Magic Mix to say this and go mad. <laughs> Oh my god, that would okay, have been but okay. But imagine if they had, and he somehow got stuck in some like oh, double, like double another temporal time loop within a oh time loop. God. Oh my god! It, I, I had that thought, and I'm like, if they did that, I don't think I would ever recover from a time travel episode ever again. <laughs> it, I and, just okay. There's another thing is that there's also Pike who could have been interesting because then he goes to Boraf and he. he you know, yeah. messes up with time. So that would have been also an interesting thing. Like there's so many people who are messed up in times that could have helped the story. Yeah. Yep. Um, we have some good ones in the chat. Yum yum pod, I would have liked to see Lorca be a total freak. Heck, it would have oh, been nice to see yeah. Ash Tyler to show off how much better a partner book is. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh damn. Shade. Oh. Shade of it all. Are you fing kidding me? Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh that gosh. was wonderful. <laughs> um uh, Jim McMahon, I, I know why they didn't. They didn't want to pay Jason Isaacs, but I would have liked to see Burnham interact with Lorca. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Michelle Yeoh costs money. True. Yummy mm -hmm. Pod Cornwell should have returned. Would have loved to see that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Dana agrees with bringing back Giorgio. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jim really liked just having Ariam and, and Nielsen in a scene together. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, and Nielsen. Sorry, Nielsen wasn't in there. Um, same actress for a season. Um, but they also had yeah. Bryce show up too, which was nice. Yeah, they had Bryce show up. Mm -hmm. I, I really would have loved to see them jump to the moment. And you're talking about like interdimensional timey wimey shenanigans. The the moment that Disco and Mirror Disco merged and Lorca oh. shut, and them having to deal with that for like 18 minutes, that would have been really cool. Um, but we already know from like the trailers and nonsense that there might be doing some mirror nonsense. So what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the trailer. You, like, never... you don't watch trailers. I don't. I didn't watch the trailer. Yeah, yeah. I just you didn't of... watch our review of the trailer. I no. can't because then it would spoil the season for me. <laughs> hey, you remember that in the trailer review, I actually knocked out the, the yeah. main plot. <laughs> <You did. laughs> <laughs> oh yeah by the way i was gonna mention that in my psa about the review i'm like if, if giraffe wasn't on the show we wouldn't have like the giraffe was right sticker like yeah. we wouldn't have the meme we wouldn't Remember, have I'm a giraffe profane, literally predicting every single season she's a prophet <laughs> I'm, a, I'm no i'm a prophet i'm not a profane you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah it was yeah, a misspelling yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Tara didn't uh, watch our our uh, trailer review either. So she's this is the first she's hearing about the the mirror shenanigans. Um, um I hold on. Yes, I just thought of my strange new loop. I like it. Go. Alternate alternate uh, plot point to tonight's story. What if Michael had encountered herself pre Battle of the Binary Stars? But she wouldn't be on. But the she disco. wouldn't be on Discovery. Well, they were, well, actually, no, they was on right. the Shenzhou. Oh, right. yeah, she was on yeah. the Shenzhou. I mean, I like the idea, but yeah, sorry. Yeah, but she could have talked to, she could have talked to Saru pre, I oh, know he was on the Shenzhou also. Mm -hmm. he was was the on Discovery. Shenzhou. Everyone Stamets, else. But he's already talking <laughs> with, her, with her, like, yeah. Kalberg? Yeah. Yeah. That would have not mm -hmm. stopped anything anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this was oh, good. Detmer oh yeah, where was, was Nan? In... Yummy up. Yep. Where was Nan? Oh yeah, Detmer, Detmer was in. Detmer was no, on the Shenzhou. Detmer was yeah, there Detmer on, was the on the Shenzhou. Yeah. 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 yeah, that whole thing was yeah. Yep. Anyway. Anyway. Anyway, that was a fun stream to loop. Oh yeah, where is Landry being a total weirdo? Yeah, unfortunately, she was at the shuttle with Lorca and Saru. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, those would have been some good cameos too. Uh, speaking of being a weirdo. Let's face the strange. It is our review. I can do transitions sometimes. It is our review of Face the Strange, episode 504 of Star Trek Discovery. Our order tonight will go MC, Eric, Hawk, Giraffe, followed by myself. Let's do this. We're going to do this review like we did in the old days. 
uh, just because this is a bottle episode and it's one one thing. So we're going to do mm-hmm. our thoughts and then go into two sidebars and uh, go in the mailbag. Maybe Actually. a short show. I, I lied. That will never happen. Um, <laughs> it's already 10. So it's already 10. MC, your thoughts on episode 504. Uh, I said this uh, uh, off mic before we started. Um, I was really tired when I was watching this episode and I thought I was going to fall asleep during it. And about five minutes in, I'm just like, I am so fucking awake. Like, I am so here for this. Um, This, and I think this was mentioned in the mailbag a couple of times, really reminded me of the Voyager episode Shattered. Mm. Um, But this is like, that one was like very campy and very fitting for Voyager in the look at all of like the insane shit that has happened to us. Meanwhile, this was, I think, done a lot more serious as a character study of Michael. Uh, And I really liked that. I thought it, it worked very well. And this is a very good episode to have for the last season, which I don't think that they, you know, I pretty sure this episode was probably totally in the can by the time they knew the season series was ending but it works so well for that because it's like this nice retrospective i love a clip show that's not actually a clip show (laughs) Um, that's um and of course also this made me think of uh, magic makes the sanest man go mad which is like one of my top favorite episodes of discovery and i think that this one is now i apparently really like discovery having time travel shenanigans because this is already one of my favorite episodes and i mean like when they had that moment in like the future and i actually like just went are they doing calypso (laughs) (laughs) yes yeah um so yeah no this is really good a very good um uh showcase of Sonequa Martin Green and Callum Keith Rennie, uh, and um, uh, Anthony Rapp as well, because he did have quite a big role in this. I, I just, I really like. I no notes. I don't. Other than they should have had. I kept on thinking it's like, oh, I want Spock to turn up. I want Lorca to turn up. I want somebody like. I mean, I know they had Ar- Arium, which was good, but Arium doesn't have the same cachet as some of the. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess yeah the. There is the emotional element, but I mean, it was still great to see her. It was really great to see her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Eric. I was talking to Hawk about this um, before the show and we're, we're saying how much this is like this, how fast has jumped to like our top, top disco episodes. And this is probably my second favorite episode behind unification three. Oh, wow. Like I love this episode so much. I love time travel. I've said this multiple times on this show um, and having a fun bottle episode is just, it just, it just tickles my heart. Um, there was a little bit of the cynic in me who was like, I wonder if they're doing this just so that they can, you know, pluck off little things to be like, this is the last season. We need, want to make sure we hit all these, you know, beats before the end of the show. You know, I don't care. It, it's still such a good episode. I liked seeing the different eras of, disco and seeing you know where it came from where it's going um i love the whole mystery aspect of this rayner versus michael throughout the whole time their relationship grew immensely over this episode and i love that i like seeing that um rayner's 20 seconds of getting to know you actually paid off in this episode which i thought was hilarious (laughs) um the the michael versus michael fight was amazing like seeing cynical martin green play the old michael like the totally broken and you know scared not broken but you know she's scared about where she's headed Mm -hmm. and like she's unsure of what she's doing versus the now michael it's it's such a a breath of fresh air just seeing her like try to be like you know what i i was you i'm just trust me that you're going to get to a good place. And then even Rainer says that later to an amazing effect. Um, seeing how much the crew has changed from the first mm-hmm. season to now and their distress. And then later when Michael's talking to them at the future present and they're like, yeah, we wouldn't have never <laughs> believed you. <laughs> I thought that was, that was amazing. Um, bringing back people that aren't on the, on the show anymore. Hannah Chessman, who was Arium 2 was nice to see um yeah. 
seeing uh, Ronnie um, Ronnie Rowe as Bryce come back, like those are people like I miss. I miss Bryce. I like him as a character. Yeah. So the fact that he's not back, um, it would have been nice to have um, who's uh, who's Arium One who ended up becoming uh, Nielsen. Nielsen. Uh, I, 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 Sarah Mitch. Sarah Mitchell. Mitch. Or sorry, Sarah Mitch. Mitch. Sorry. Mitch. Yeah. It would have been nice to see her again. Also, Sarah Mitch, Hamilton Hawk. She's from Hamilton. <laughs> Um, She's on. She got transferred to the Voyager. Voyager J. Yeah. Voyager J. Um, but it would have been nice so to see her. Lucky. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> the the great go to Voyager J. Oh yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, uh, Stamets again, as always. Anthony Rapp is always wonderful. I like that he played off the fact that he used to be so grumpy in the earlier seasons, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you know, they understand. I I was a little bit much back then, and. Um, it it's it's nice seeing it was nice seeing the evolution of disco in one episode like yeah it sort of paid off for all of us all of us who've been watching it for such a long time to be like oh remember back then that was nice oh remember that time oh we didn't get to see the ship being built but that's cool stuff like that it was it's nice for disco fans this whole episode was sort of fun just to just to watch all the easter eggs and this is oh god i love this episode yeah, agreed. Agreed. I know what you're saying now, Hawk. Uh, Pre-show, uh, where you were, I did not put you in this list. Hawk, you are actually up. <laughs> uh, so, building off what Eric said, yeah, this is a love letter, but it's multiple love letters, kind of just crammed into one magnificent episode. Uh, you know, it's a love letter to the bottle episode. It's a love letter to Bowie's changes. We were talking about that off mic. A lot of those lyrics really apply to this. Uh, it's a love letter to the Star Trek timey wimey loop episodes, which always seem to fall into our top ten categories in that. But I don't know why <laughs> they, they just do. They just work in the, in this situation. Um, and lastly, this is a love letter to Captain Michael Burnham. Uh, yes. In its last season, mm. it's important to be able to reflect on her journey to the captain's chair, and like not just like you know Burnham and Sonequa Martin Grease's portrayal of her in that. And it's been a really complex journey um the biggest criticism we always see leveled at the show is how unabashedly emotional it is and its main characters interactions and we've said this before this is not a bad thing this is discovery's niche and one thing i'm really glad is discovery has never really abandoned its mission statement in doing so you know it's always meant to be like a different kind of leadership um and I know time is going to be a lot more favorable to the show for people when they go back and rewatch it. Um, I don't think there's a doubt no. about that. Yeah, I have. really don't. Just yeah. because of all the like same level shit that Deep Space Nine got when it was fresh. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that this show is going to be beloved in a decade or so. So mm -hmm. I like that, Hawk. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, not only that. It was great to see Burnham and Rayner finally work out the dynamics of how this command structure was going to work in this episode, because obviously they were it was wildly clashing. Uh, Rayner is forced to confront the fact that the universe he lives in has changed now, as Michael tells him, the burn's over, you know, which means his command style has got to get up to speed or the new reality is going to overtake it. And this was really how key up uh, his interactions with Stamets were in this episode and that because they're a little bit both in the same boat, right? With Stamets and that and his, the fame of his uh, spore drive is kind of withered and he's got to face like acclimate himself to an even greater challenge now and with the progenitor's uh, technology. Just pretty much it, everything about this worked. Uh, the episode written by Sean Cocker and directed by Lee Rose. It's, you know, it's now it's in my top five of Discovery um, where it lands in overall Star Trek and that. Still going to wind up on a, uh, on a high up on the list. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Nice. Nice. Draft. Yes. <laughs> uh <laughs> yes. Let's go. Oh. You can do it. <laughs> um, somebody was talking about Waterboy today, and now I have that stuck in my head. You can do it. Can anyway, do it. Uh, this episode brought to you by Liquid Death. <laughs> uh, I this episode did not go where I thought it was gonna go. Um, right away, we got like the timey wimey drum thing, you know, and I love the fact that they went very fast to like figuring out the scientific solution of it because each of them brought 
a different piece of the solution. Reina knows what a time bug is. Michael knows that Stamet is out of loop. Stamet knows that he can figure out a solution. Uh, Michael has already done most of the math with Zora and all this and all this. And I like the teamwork. I thought this was, this was going to be a Michael episode, but it's definitely not a Michael episode. It's a Rainer episode. It's a Rainer because, episode. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that, you know, throughout this season, you see Michael grow and change and go through her grief of everything, of losing, you know, her family, with uh, losing her mother over and over again. <laughs> Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, losing her captain, losing her crew, finding them again, losing her brother, finding him again, and learning to not define herself by others, but define herself by herself. And then she's got mon- she's come on full circle because now she's so close to her crew and knows people so well and knows herself so well that she doesn't have to experience grief, reflect on her relationship with people because she has done that and she has grown and now she's steady and, and secure in this relationship. So we they would have done this episode like two seasons ago. It would have been about Michael seeing Spock. It would have been about Michael seeing Amanda. It would have been about Michael seeing all these people she's lost and like processing her grief and everything. And then in the end being like, oh, I'm I'm stronger and I'm mm-hmm. I'm, I'm more set and now I'm 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 more together, you know, because there are all these people. But so when they started jumping and she's like, it's the right angel, I was like, ah, that's all right. Uh, I was so excited because I fucking love season two of Discovery. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's weirdos, you know. But um, uh, slowly, slowly, I realized that Michael doesn't have work to do on herself anymore. She's fully accomplished. She's fully stable. She's fully herself, and she knows who she is, what she does. It's like a, a woman in her forties. Like I feel that, you know, like, <laughs> for real. You know, like people tell you, "Oh, your youth is the most important." No, no, a twenty-year-old is a dumb motherfucker. I was a dumb motherfucker. I mean, I didn't have money. I didn't know shit. I defined myself about like people around oh, me. I tried. To- I tried to please everybody around me and I had no social clues. I was not able to read people. I got manipulated. I got abused. I got lied to. Now I'm in my 40s. I'm like, no, I call the shots. I know how to read people. I know what's good for me. I know what I like. I know what I want to do. I know how to say goodbye. I know how to say no. And this is Michael now. And I was so happy about seeing her being like, you know, the only moment when, when she met herself, and that's where you see actually this moment was very important. I didn't I didn't like it, but then I really liked it. You're like so spot on. <laughs> I know you too well. <laughs> um I didn't like it because I thought it was too easy and it was too expected. But at the same time, I think it very I really liked it because it really shows you that like the growth and the stability of Michael in season five. So I really like that. And also that she makes choices she fully assumes. But then it's about Raynor, right? Raynor is the person that needs to go through that growth because he didn't have the opportunity to actually reflect on who he truly is. He was in, he's in reaction to things, you know? rather than action and and that's very important that's very interesting to see that at the beginning i was oh i think that you know is that kind of character and that's fine but actually he's way more than that and that's what they're trying to get out of him and yeah i forgot what i was gonna add. jet reno was amazing i love see i always mm-hmm. love seeing jet reno and i love when she shoots people even more um <laughs> so that was great. I was disappointed I'm not seeing bigger Camaro. I would have loved to see Lorca. I would have loved to see Georgiou. I know it's not possible even No, no, you know great. what though, Giraffe? You know what though? I think that and I think it goes to what Michelle Paradise said. Um 
I think had they known they were getting canceled at this point, they would have gone for those 1, cameos, percent. which is yeah. like yeah. what's sad, right? Like they yeah. got what they could for the episode, knowing because not knowing that they were getting canceled yet. I know Loka would not have brought so much, but um, uh, I mean, I would have been brought to me a lot because I would have been happy, you know. <laughs> but I think I think Spock would actually very have very befitted that story because Spock goes through the same process than his sister. Uh, with many years difference because that's the same thing. He's somebody that doubts himself and doesn't know and defines himself how people define him until he realized that no, he's simply Spock and he can be himself and he can be out of the categories that people want to put him in. And then that's the Spock we see in TOS and then that we see in the motion picture and then we see in Voyage Home and then we see in TNG, you know, that person that has basically created himself and is detached detached from like judgment of others, like in Unification 1 and 2, you know, that person. And I think that Michael seeing his brother, you know, so young and so troubled and so broken and so sad and so, you know, unable to figure himself out as she was, knowing what she learned on Nivar in Unification 3 and how, you know, important, like how into himself he becomes so much that he changed the destiny of, like, planets. I think that would have been beneficial for Spock and for her and, you know, and fit it, be fitting to the story. But, you know, I don't know. Ethan Peck is an expensive bitch. I don't. I don't know why. I <laughs> listen. I want reasons. It costs somebody, a lot to cut that hair, baby. Let's go. We got to paste on the beard gave again. Me some reason. <laughs> yeah. Um. And there, I have one pet peeve. I have two pet peeves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> one is the fifteen hours ago. They need to stop. They need to stop doing this. Please mm-hmm. stop doing this. Yeah. I mean, I. They did it once, they do it twice. I mean, it's not, but like, I'm like, this is no 90s. This is such a weird way. This is so Battlestar season one. Right? I'm like, okay, that's the mood. (laughs) Sure, why not? And another thing that is always triggering me in shows is when they're like, you have one minute. And that one minute is actually 17 minutes. And I'm like, (laughs) no. (laughs) That was more than three minutes, my friend. Like, <laughs> Wait, do you mean the sixty not- seconds to convince old Michael was was not longer than sixty seconds? <laughs> Dude, and it was not like you know I'm not like counting the second. It was like obviously way longer, you know. <laughs> like at least there was time dilation going on. There you go. <laughs> Let's say that. <laughs> um, I fully thought young Michael would shoot, just shoot somebody for the example. And that was something that missed. Like I thought she would have shot like a it in the knee or something like that. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was the warning fun. shot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> nice. Um, so what's fun about this episode and what I love about it. And yeah, like being up there in favorite disco episodes is that, it threw it threw people off this week in a really fun way. It's it's fun sometimes and then it's in completely just fucking irritating and others seeing some of these episodes ahead of time and then people coming up with crazy theories and saying things in the spoiler chat and you can't say anything about it. But like I loved I loved the discourse about the bug being placed last week and people being like, "Oh man, like I, I hope it's not just like, you know, another like tracker plot because it's like overdone and like this and that. And I love that that just like got thrown just completely out. And this is like Krenum tech and P Lewis put it, put it perfectly. I liked that the bug wasn't tracking them, but messing with time. Nice. Twist. Cause like you would expect it, right? Like it's such a TV trope to be a tracker. And it just wasn't. Mm. It was something completely worse. Um, and it uh, and and that that's the other thing that I really want to talk about. Why I love this episode so much, and it's something that that Hawk brought up, and that's this show having the 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 bad crowd of all the fucking disco haters and all those people just who who whine and cry. This isn't my Star Trek. I've been a Star Trek fan since the nineteen sixties my friends um yeah that too listen 
one of the things that this season so far in this episode is doing well is making sure that discovery connects to all of the other Trek series. It is already connected to TNG for better or worse. <laughs> it is connected to deep space nine already. I have and forgotten. I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, trigger TNG. warning. I should have put a trigger warning giraffe. <laughs> And now it's connected to Voyager forever, which I mm -hmm. think is so freaking dope, right? Because of course the Krenum got involved in the temporal wars. Of course they did. Mm -hmm. And of course they were like, oh, you remember that guy from a thousand years ago who almost like really fucked up time and that Janeway chick, like she, she really just saved our asses there. Yeah. Let's make something smaller and worse. And uh, <laughs> they, they do. <laughs> and I, I love it. And I love that. I love how this not just connects to to older Trek, but it it connects to the lore that season three created, right? That time travel is illegal and it is a criminal offense. So that something like this, this Krenum chronophage is found on the black market, you know? Um, it's just everything about this era, which makes it really sad that the show is leaving, is so interesting. And I wish that we got spinoffs about some of the 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 other lore like courier stuff black market stuff temporal cold war stuff burn stuff um man i'd love a i mean i don't know how you get someone better than calum keith renee i will not stop singing the praises of that man i've loved i mean we, we already did it last week but i love that man for decades now this was so much his episode and he acted his ass off in this episode holy crap um just the just the realization of finally figuring out what this thing is like going back to his days as a captain during the burn right oh, oh yeah damn like this is one of these nasty things like that having that knowledge it's it's so cool we're going to talk about it in a minute here the obvious connection to calypso and it not being as easy as you think it is because it's it's not but we're going to talk about how it could be and how it probably is um there's just so many little pieces in this episode that make it one of the best episodes of the series, I think. Um, the Naked Michael and Michael stuff, sorry, Naked, Naked book. book. I, you know, I yeah. think they're, you know, they're they're doing the slow roll of getting them back together, and this was like yeah. part part one. But um, we love like remember what she's missing? Some, uh, some yeah, male exactly. eye candy. Yeah, you know? yeah. We're here for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gene writes, uh, have Cisco or Wesley show up. Yeah. Hey, well, they mm. could. Yeah. They're yeah. out of time. Um, I just, I really love that. Yeah. And you know, I got to agree with the draft, like the Michael on Michael stuff wasn't actually like my favorite part of this episode. Uh, it worked. It was cool. I was he more here for her stuff and reconnecting with her crew when she was a mutineer and having Arium be the one that gets every like to get to the whole crew to rally around her. Like, I love that. And getting to see Hannah Cheeseman back was just um, awesome. The the other thing I want to say about that is just a very little thing. Tilly has grown so much as a character in, in five seasons, right? Like she and, and, and Mary Wiseman acts the character so much differently, but how quickly she was able to turn back around into cadet mm -hmm. Tilly would like Michael's like, yeah, like you think I'm going to knife you. And she just does that little, yeah, sorry. Thank like you, you know, <laughs> it's, it, and that voice, it was so good and it was so believable. Um, this is a fantastic episode of not just discovery, but of star Trek. And I'm so happy that we got it. Oh boy. Um, yeah, let's talk about the Calypso in the room because man, this this is it, folks. I, I and I and and I, I will say, and I, I could be wrong, I think we're not getting anything after this. I think this is where you decide to put the pieces together and make Calypso what you will. So Face of Strange may have finally answered that much sought after question. Um we see that one of the possible futures, the Breen have attacked. They got the, the technology from Maul and Locke and destroyed everything, right? Disco has been abandoned for 30 years. Now, this is not the story of Calypso, but why it's connected is the song that Zora is humming and the window in which she is watching Michael and Rainer. Um, those are two really important notes. So another ad. 
There's another <sighs> ad going on. Yeah, that's really annoying. As sorry about that, guys. Um, as disco in that episode. Sorry, I'm a little bit. Yeah, that that disco in Calypso has been abandoned for a thousand years, right? Um, and it's also not the refit. It is the old old discovery. So that's important to know too. But we do, as I mentioned, have Zora humming that very familiar tune. Something to think about here, and we'll all get all your takes about this. If this time bug in this episode was reaping, wreaking havoc on the ship, and there was already one possible future where they didn't succeed in the Breen win, right? Who's to say that in the other futures or past that the saw that you know they went to, one of them being before they they're at the battle of control, that Stamets knows what's going on and that thing's not stopping. He forces them to abandon ship and have Discovery go through that wormhole unmanned. Zora will still evolve into Zora because she's already started. So being no one's looking for discovery in the 32nd century. So it could be just got like not looked after for a thousand years. I want to get your thoughts on this too, because Zora also calls calls seeing them a dream, hinting that maybe Calypso was a dream, which I'm not sure about. A lot to unpack Absolutely. here. We'll get your takes. We'll go in the same order, MC. Um, well, I think one thing that has become clear with Star Trek, especially in the last couple of years, is that time is always in flux. Like, you'll always have Khan uh, uh, come up, even though it might be 30 years after it was supposed to be, because, you know, temporal shenanigans happen. And it's clear with, like, this episode, like that Calypso could happen. Uh, and I don't think that there is anything to say that it's not yet um, or that it hasn't. I mean, everything can happen uh, in whatever timeline. Um, you know, I'm big on timelines uh, because of Kelvin. Um, uh, yeah, no, it's it's a very confusing question to bring up because, you know, like you said, it's, you know, before the refit, but it's a thousand years in the future. How does this exactly work out? Considering Discovery did come a thousand years into the future, maybe it's splintered. Um, Joe brings up in the chat that he remembers at one point that they mentioned two ships being detected in the wormhole. But would the Red Angel suit be considered a ship? Oh. Huh. Um, yes. Yes. I would say yes, but yeah, it, it is. But maybe not. Though. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe there was two discoveries, and one of them becomes the discovery from Calypso. Uh, there's a um, a million ways you could do it. I don't think we're ever going to actually get an answer on the show, but um, that's what comic and book writers are for. And if not them, fan fiction writers. I mean, Michelle Paradise has said. As, as late as 2021, which is three years ago now, but like it into feels like season, hundred years. Ago, I know okay. into season three already that they are eventually going to get to those answers and they're actually going to do it. I don't know how much truth is behind that, but maybe, maybe, I don't know. I feel like this was, this was it. And this is where mm -hmm. you kind of choose your own adventure with it. Um, who's up next? Me. Eric? I love, I love multiple timelines. Like, like MC, I, I'm a fan of the Kelvin verse, so I love that this could possibly be a random timeline. Like it could be just a splinter. I also I wonder if it has been abandoned for a thousand years, would the nacelles still just be out or would they be docked? Like we don't know how they But it's not just the nacelles. Oh, it's right? also the bridge. It's got, like, too. It's got the hood, yeah. the nacelles, it's still just it's got the, the main registry. Like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right. definitely it is the old one. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. Like we don't know how the the show's gonna end. So we don't know. Maybe they'll yeah. have multiple discoveries. They did it in in TNG. It's another right? discovery. <laughs> it's another discovery. <laughs> You're just it was discovery. the backlands all along. <laughs> Maybe they'll do their they'll own um version of like the the um, discovery 
C showing up and then the old discovery going up and then there's three different discoveries. That'd be cool. Although, you know, overdone. And a really old John Luke Gollum on board one of them. (laughs) (laughs) Very dead Gollum already. That being said, I I like the idea that this could be random, like Doctor Strange is seeing this in a different uh, timeline. Like, that would be cool. Like, I, 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 I like that we don't have to have all the answers. Like, that was a cool story. Maybe it'll be, maybe it's a possible future for one of the past, um, you know, multiple times they fucked around with time. Like, who knows? I, I love, I, I like the idea that it's, that Zora still evolves to a point where she misses her crew because eventually they're all going to die anyway. So she will eventually miss them. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hawk. Yeah. I mean, the thought that there's, there could have been two discoveries at some point it's not that crazy i mean let's let's face it you know there's it's lots not of pres- especially with lots time of and wormholes yeah and lots of presence within you know if like you know riker there could be two rikers and that two boimlers and that there could at there could you know during that's they could have somehow split during that trip to the future and that i mean time was all in flux and that so i mean the conditions were there um so you're saying but, what kung is saying that maybe the other ship was the kelvin verse disco the the other ship detected yeah so i mean like it, it, the idea of flash i was like i kind of like no. what is happening kelvin verse has been mentioned way too many times <laughs> okay. on this episode sorry not you, enough you can't do that anymore not that i'm now that i'm on the show <laughs> i can and i will <laughs> uh but to continue in that yeah i mean it it's a, a possibility in that but personally for me uh calypso itself can, it 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 can and should maybe stay just its own separate thing in that you know it's like it's canon but it's also outside of canon and that it's like you know one of those untouchable kind of stories in that because really the story is about zora and that and it's like the intense loneliness of a thousand years yeah you know, and it, it's haunting it's beautiful and I don't really feel the need to kind of, you know, steer the story in a direction, you know, where we find out exactly what happened in that, you know? Yeah. I don't think it needs it. Yep. Traff? It doesn't need it, but I need it. (laughs) (laughs) Like... Uh, first of all, bring back Aldis Hodge to Star Trek. Yes. Because if there's one actor that has played a Trekkie over and over again. It is him, and he's awesome. I mean, DC did him dirty, bring him to Star Trek, for real. I'm not kidding, it would be awesome. And we saw in Calypso, he was incredible. And he's so hot also, like, come on. I was gonna say, he's you can't have him man. and David Ajala in the same episode, it's too care. much hotness. No, you would, you would sweat to death. You would just sweat to death. <laughs> yeah, yes. basically, like, um, it's the Lazarus so effect, right? I, uh, Calypso <laughs> is like, is a beautiful episode, first of all, because I love the, the interpretation of Ulysses and, you know, that it's a very well written episode in reference of the odyssey it has like so many hints and so many things and so many like sentences and words and like ways to to make it a star trek we know that voyager is an art is like literally the odyssey you know and it's very i love when star trek does classical reception because it's very often beautifully done let's be honest uh it's one of the things they don't fuck up so much so <laughs> No, Calypso is a beautiful episode, and I I think that, you know, trying to explain it by, like, time travel, different, different like, you know, like, universes, it's a bit boring. I'm sorry, you guys, but, like, Star Trek does it over and over again, and I think that they were not ready for the reception of Calypso, that people would love it so much. I agree much. with that completely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they were like, oh shit you know like we should do something with this (laughs) i think the the sole purpose of calypso is to just push and open the star trek timelines because as much discovery jumped 900 years in the future to be able to like stop for star trek to keep being future for us because let's be honest we're getting very close to (laughs) to archer like closer and closer you know it's like 30 years till first contact so, yeah, not far. 40, yeah. yeah, 30, 30 something, 37, 39. I don't remember. Um, so, 
um, we're getting. It's gonna become our. Pre- it's gonna become become present. Like I don't know if Star Trek will like last a hundred years. We never know. But I love the fact that they let open doors to like, you know, continue being science fiction. So I think that's important. Um, I think discovering being lost for a thousand years is not really crazy because we saw the Roman ship in the first years, episode yeah. being like lost for eight hundred years and like. They had no clue. The thing is that why is there nobody on board? You know, he sees no bodies. He sees no skeletons, no nothing, no mummies, no nothing. You know, Calypso just, does it's not they just Michael that ascends. It's and, everybody. And abandoned ship and told to stay at those coordinates. So, yeah. Why is that? They went yeah. somewhere. Like, but that's a whole crew. That's a lot of people. So, yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, I think it's a beautiful episode. I do think it needs... Uh, a tie-in to to discovery not an explanation but just like a door like a very clear door of like when or where it is you know the music that Zora plays yeah I thought that we were gonna be at that moment but like she's clearly not at the right coordinate and I think it would have been so easy to make it so yeah I yeah Mm -hmm. I agree yeah and yeah. that's like kind of like a missed opportunity. And it um, gives people closure if they had done that. Yeah, yeah. like the fact that yeah. she's still at, um, you know, the Federation headquarter. I'm like, oh, well, that is not it's Calypso. Not the, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that maybe, you know, it could have been like so simple than like seeing a taco plate on the table. Right. Oh. Mm. You know, that yeah. they were just after the what happened. And Zora could still explain that the brain did the thing and whatever, yep. you know. Yep. And then they would have been like, oh, shit, they missed that. Him and by, that like, explains why his people were at, at, at war with the Federation, too. Like it started a whole conflict because we do hear him called the, the Federation, the Vidra, Vidrash or something, whatever they called him in the, the, the Vid- second. Pedrash, episode. Pedrash, Fed, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So. And so like the destruction of the Federation by the Breen and all this, maybe there was a war, there was more things. And then like it was known that the Federation like open that case of like finding that weapon that killed everybody. You know, it would have been like it would have like opened the story so much more. Yeah. Um I think it was a bit lacking. I, I clearly think it's it, but I I still have like one maybe hypothesis. We know that spoiler a little bit about section thirty one if you don't want to hear about it, but I mean it's not a spoiler because they told about it, but we know it's gonna tie in with yesterday's enterprise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yesterday's discovery, mm. yeah, mm. you know, yep, and maybe that will be the explanation for Calypso because yep. definitely it's a ref- it's before the refit. So you know what happens here. Maybe that's like one more, maybe yeah. <laughs> to yeah. open this. But yeah, um, I'm very much with Colin. It should remain a romantic mystery. I really like that. And I do completely agree with what Giraffe said. They had no idea what they were doing. And not every one of those short treks is canon. So there's something to be said about it taking off. It is it is a great short trek. I, I think I've gone on record a couple times saying it's overrated. I watched it again. I take that back. Uh, I don't think it's overrated. <laughs> it's very good. Um, I'm fine with this being it. And you get to kind of decide for yourself what happened and you just have that little bit of a hint from it here um i don't think i need any more if they do fine that's cool but um and i mean you know i i, I think i saw some people like saying well it, it, if it's a dream that's kind of lame but i don't know you know she's all by herself on a ship after it's been attacked maybe she did dream up the whole thing she's not just an ai she is an organism she is a being she can dream so i don't think that's out of the realm of possibility either um yeah we'll have to see where it goes i don't think it is going anywhere else after this but you never know i mean uh, if you're gonna dream up someone you dream up aldous hodge about aldous hodge right? yeah. i mean yeah. no lies no lies detected um a lot of you guys already talked about it in your in your thoughts about the episode but we'll we'll do one more go around about the final time jump to to Lorca, Lorca's discovery, Arium in command while they're out on an away mission we do get the the return of hannah cheeseman as Arium. Um, and that discovery that is still under the command of him, of Lorca. Michael's still like, I think a couple of days fresh of being on board still has that, you know, that label of being a mutineer. 
She has to fight herself. Rainer has to learn fast how to use his people skills, I think, in one of the best scenes in the in in the episode. And Stamets has to learn how to be a grumpy old man again. What do we think about this final time jump and just the kind of the emotional finale of it? Uh, same order, MC. Uh, so I think my favorite part, the one that really stood out to me, I mean, first of all, I mean, it was great seeing Arium as Arium because I know, like, in her final episode, like, we had, like, the hints of her coming back, but this is actually Arium and um when michael says uh she'd sacrifice herself until he's like oh Arium would never do that and Arium's just like yes i absolutely would it was such a good moment and it um it really um brought this emotionality to um Arium, as emotional as that episode is um that the fact that it was not a decision that was made just in the moment. I mean, like, I mean, I know like she forgot it and everything because the uh, timey wimey wibbly wobbly, but that she even knows at this point that if that hypothetical were to come up, that's exactly what she would do. So it's, it, it's, it's very, very beautiful to see that that's just who Ariam is. Um, and um, the men- mentioning Lorca and then not having him show up. I mean, I felt so fucking teased. <laughs> It's like the new trend of Discovery to mention him and not have him show up. It like happens in Terra Firma as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, seeing Michael, like the you know probably you know episode two Michael or mm. whatever. Like she doesn't even have like a um, a badge yet. Um, it's I. It's. it's I don't even know what to say. It's it's just so weird. I did like that Michael said um, uh, it'll be a long road because then, of course, Faith of the Heart started playing in my head. Sure did. Um, Same. <laughs> and, and Rainer, it, it's such a great continuation from the last episode because I was kind of critical of him in the last episode. And it's like, oh, they actually paid it off very nicely. I like this. This is this is why Discovery is so good because you can't just watch one episode of Discovery in you know a vacuum, and you've got to watch all of Discovery because it th- things that happen matter. Yep, agreed, Eric. Uh, I talked about this a lot in my <laughs> beginning yeah. part, but um, what else to talk about? I. The the chat between uh, Stamets and Lark and not Lark. Oh my God, we said Lark, Lark so many times. <laughs> Rainer, He's on the brain now. <laughs> exactly. Um, He's on the brain. Uh, uh, press the button. <laughs> Get off my brain. <laughs> uh, the um, I hope the, that fan fiction exists. <laughs> <laughs> probably now. Um, the Rainer and Stamets chat was wonderful, and just having Rainer sort of coming down and you know realizing where he has to meet people and it paying off even just a couple minutes later or multiple minutes um in that timeline um the i love that rainer when he talks to reese he goes he says gen like his first name first like it he went personal right away and i think that was that was a big step for him like to be like this is where i'm gonna be personalized with you. This is how I reach out to you and how I connect. Um, and then he talks about ships because he's maybe a ship head too. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's a real thing <laughs> from Rainer's. I think he's head. a ship head. I yeah. think Rainer's a ship I could, head. I could see that too. Um, I mean, he's talking about a ship that existed hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So I think that, yeah, you got it. No, yeah, you, you met really sailors. Yeah. Have you met sailors? <laughs> Like, no, <laughs> I have not. They can talk about ships that are like 300 years old and be like, you know, they had like that many things. And you're like, how do you know that? <laughs> That's, <laughs> fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, again, seeing the, the the old crew on on the bridge was just wonderful. And seeing Arium and seeing Arium in charge and everything that MC said previously um, was is spot on. And and then again, I liked seeing Bryce back. I miss him. I I don't know where he went, but you know, it, it was nice. He's to- working with Kovic on like some super secret project um, and then disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. So it was nice seeing him again and actually taking charge and being that being not just a background being like, oh yeah, remember him? He actually was part of the the whole thing. Um, other than that, like everything I said about Michael 
facing Michael and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hawk. Uh, I'm glad I did get to talk about Michael facing Michael and that. Um, I don't know if it was necessary. I'm just glad it was there because, like, I had a lot of fun watching that part of the episode. You know, Michael now, as we see here, in command versus Michael just a couple weeks into being like, you know, basically hijacked and transported to Discovery without, her, you know, pretty much without her consent. You could really see what was happening in her mind, seeing like Michael in there. Like, you know, being, a, it's like, hey, I need you to be cool on that, but I think we're, we're going to have to do something crazy in that with the ship and her. Like, just like it reacting, like, probably the the only time I've ever seen her angry, you know, because like she's being like forced into some choice in that where it's like, am I going to be a mutineer again? And then, of course, the fight. The fight was really well directed. Like, I love it. It was a good career, well choreographed. The camera work was great. <laughs> I, I am I, I yeah like I said I, I, whether it was necessary now I'm glad it was there and that and as it because this was you know largely about like Michael and her growth and that and it's like seeing her at that the worst point versus like you know the at where she is now I kind of don't know yeah. what what more can I say about that Stardance Supreme um, new to the chat if so welcome Stardancer I've never seen that username before so if this is your first chime welcome writes Captain Michael seeing her feral younger self was the coolest thing ever yeah I mean it was pretty awesome um draft I love seeing Arium because I think we brush over how much he's, her death has meant for Michael a lot and how terrible it was because I think that's the first time she accepts being unable to save, to do anything about saving people, which she's constantly trying to be, to do, <laughs> like throughout season one, right? Like Battle of the Binary, like uh, Battle of the Binary Stars, and then like a Givorin again and again and again and again. And that's the moment when like she accepts that she has not a hand on like people's fate and let go of Arium in like a terrible way. I don't remember what Spock tells her, but he tells her something about like how she feels she's responsible for everybody or something like that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's the first time when she's like, well, no, I can't. And I think it's an important, it's an a, an important thing to learn when you're a captain. Um, but yeah, I feel it was like everybody is way too, like gullible. Like, I know they love her, but like, have they met Romulans? Do you think they don't know your first name and that you're a shiphead and that you like the crossfield? They know everything. <laughs> they will <laughs> always gotta bring up the Romulans, dude. For I real. said it was going like, to be a Romeo knife for draft when she goes with like the Dederodex above her, the poster behind her. There's more somewhere. Like, the green. If Peacock season one has taught me anything, they will lie to you <laughs> into oblivion. Like for real. Like I'm, I'm just surprised. I mean, it's good that they did believe everybody because, you know, nobody died. But it's just like you're going to convince a guy to not shoot you when you're like a guy out of place with the wrong uniform that never met you in the engineering because he knows you're a shiphead? That's light, my friend. <laughs> that is very light. I'm sure this guy is like posting on forums everywhere on the internet about the crossfield cross line and so on. <laughs> like that, like you go through his like internet search history and you wouldn't know that. You would know all of this. <laughs> Never got through anybody's search history. <laughs> Listen, I'm like, that was a beautiful moment that took way more than three minutes, but I'm just surprised that nobody does more research on things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Yummy and Pod put it pretty funny that the Lorca era crew was so easily swayed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To Go ahead. And, they, and it's true that they, they've never met Romulans at that time. No, that's what I was yeah. going to say. To be fair, yeah. it, it was mu they, it was much more likely to be a shapeshifter than it was to be a Romulan. Yeah, right. But like post Dominion, nobody will believe your crap. So oh, you're no. going to get, oh, that no, you get shot on you get side. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't even throw you the brick. You'd just be dead. You think you think yeah. Shaw would be like, oh, yeah, indeed. I like the line of no. the. <laughs> 
You no. know that. <laughs> no, I need to get a medal for it too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, damn. But yeah, um, it was beautiful. It's just they're lucky that it, they just yeah. come from an era where everybody yeah. is very nice and gullible. <laughs> my my favorite part was that that part though the Rainer working with Stamets talking to talking to Reese, you know, just like it was really personal. And then basically putting the phaser right to his chest, talking to Michael. Mm -hmm. I thought that that was really good, like really, really good. And people have been saying it. I'll say it. They have great chemistry. Like they did a great job. I'm going to do it again. Like finding Callum for this role and, and putting him next to Sonequa Martin green is just like, Mwah. chef's mm -hmm. kiss. Perfect. Great chemistry. Can't see. I can't wait to see where else it goes. Um, yeah. Any final thoughts on this episode before we get into some mailbag? More yeah, naked Eric. book. Oh yeah, more naked book. I agree. Yeah. Fair, fair. That's what I was gonna say. No, um, um <laughs> the the one thing that sort of bothered me was at the beginning with um Adira talking to um to to Gray. And I was just saying I was like, oh Yeah. This seems yeah. this seems like they're just sort of playing it and hopefully that means they're gonna get back together. I don't know. It just seems weird to start off with that. Uh, that little you... hint tells me this is part of a bigger plot. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yep. Also, we'll see. Also, I mean, also. having Michael go through all the eras of disco will really help for her when she ascends. Shut why? Why do you have to do up. that to her? We don't want. I. I <laughs> Take this is that why, back. This is Take why I said back. I don't agree with you at the top of the show. It's such. Mm, you had to bring that up. Mm. Well, that's how Calypso happens. Is that Michael and everybody else are sad? <laughs> mm, they just all say. <laughs> Take that fucking back, Eric. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I no, want uh, somebody to uh, cosplay the guy who is in like the construction of this cove. He's a little hard art. I... He's so oh, cute. I love he's it. so cute. Ah. And I love Raider fucking with him so bad too. He's like, yeah. no, you you tell your foreman we're going to deck seven now. Be prepared. Don't be ready, son. <laughs> like, I love it. It's, so like, it's such an easy cosplay. Like, wear blue, take a hard hat, like spray paint it and put a little insignia on the thing. And like, I'll do it at Track Long Island. Done. <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right, let's hit those uh, those those personal transporters and get into the subspace to pull and mailbag. Let's hit it, Christopher. Open and chat. Channel's open. All right, who wants to take the to pull? Who's got it? Who's got it? Who's I'll got take it? it? All right, MC. So we asked Trek Twitter what they thought about episode 504, and this is what they had to say. 70% said, hell of a time. 24% said, old dogs, new tricks. 6% said, grumpy like Stamets. And a whole 0% said, a piece yeah. of Krenum. Yeah. Well, really cool. no, one, no, one, no one got hurt this week. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that means we'll keep going in our order. Eric, can you take Eric the Red's mailbag, please? This is like Inception. Eric on Eric. Eric on Eric. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Anyway, Eric the Red wrote, what a wonderful bottle episode and temporal to loop type episode. Very reminiscent of Voyager's Shattered with Burnham having to remember and deal with different periods of a ship's and crew's history. With some of TNG's all good things thrown in as well. Love seeing Burnham, Rainer, and Stamets learning to work together, as well as Rainer learning a lesson about the value of familiarity. Did not expect Burnham to have to fight herself, literally. Definitely the best episode of this season so far, and probably now an absolute classic for the series as a whole. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, Hawk. Can you take Matt Harker's, please? Yes, Matt Harker wrote, At first I was nervous about this bottle episode, but it found its legs as Michael began to reflect on her personal journey, and even more once Rainer chose to connect with Stamets. I really hoped it could have been Tilly, and hopefully she'll get his... Set. She'll give him his second chance soon. This crew really has been through it, and this one, with a solid dash of Reno, reminded us just how far they've come. Indeed, indeed. Uh, draft, can you take Collins, please? Colin wrote, I am an un unabashed... Colin with a difficult word, like right off the bat. Come on, man. <laughs> I am an unabashed lover of the time travel trope. So I really love this one. Brilliantly written, massive creativity. Staging and editing. 
off the charts good. Hard to pick a favorite moment, but Burnham going through convincing the bridge crew, the interaction with each of them, especially Ariam, all kinds of touchy filly going on there. Like my wife and I refer to seven. This one is an eleven out of ten. Nice. Eleven of ten. I, I mean, I messed up the joke, Colin. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this one is an eleven of ten. Here we go. <laughs> Love it. I did that Love in post. <laughs> I will take Yum Yum Pods, who wrote, I did make a joke last week about if Hannah Cheeseman made a return, and here she was. This was yet another <laughs> fine enough outing, but I did enjoy the bottle episode quality and having a weird time travel sci-fi gimmick at the center of it all. There are some laughs had at seeing the wacky hairstyles and wigs put on the actors to make them look younger, and I did chuckle at how insane young Michael came across. Immediately just wanted to get into a fist fight. I'm okay with some fluff episodes, and I don't want them completely removed, but they also don't help the big scavenger hunt feel that interest uh, feel that interesting, and so I look forward to the season getting a little bit more on track. But yeah, I agree. Uh, we are back to the top. MC, can you take Mars's, please? Mars wrote, wow, just wow. I did, didn't know what to expect from for this episode. I remember Julian saying something about this week's episode being really something, but I didn't expect to be on the edge of my seat the whole time. I had to keep myself from yelling, oh my God, every time they time jumped so as not to wake up my family. Y'all, they finally gave us the potential path for Calypso. Though having let it percolate all day, did we move forward at all in the quest? Loved Rainer's growth and understanding the importance of connections. I'm looking forward to being able to binge the whole season and see how that type of viewing will affect the story flow. Very nice. Very nice. Um, Eric, you take Joe Funnest Frontiers, please. Joe wrote, love this episode. It reminded me of my favorite season one episode. What's past this prologue? Who I, he said earlier in the chat meant to say uh, magic to make the sanest man go mad. Ah, Except the episode titles. Uh, yep. Yep. Uh, Hawk, can you take Chris's, please? Sure. Chris wrote, What a delightful romp that took the long road to get from somewhere to another where. Really digging the development of Rainer and timey wimey wibbly wobbly things are often my favorite. Also, Stamets existing out of time being ran past so far was wonderful. I missed part of the visuals because someone made it rain inside my eyes during the Aryan <laughs> bit. <laughs> <laughs> but this episode was also so beautiful and stunning. Top five disco. If I was pulling things off the top of my cranium. P.S. Let's dance. That Calypso reference at the end let's there? Let's dance. dance. No, yeah. I think it's a Bowie reference. Oh, Bowie <laughs> reference. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of Bowie references tonight. Makes sense. Um, Giraffe, can you take troubles, please? Trouble wrote, this episode hurt my brain at first with all the time jumps, but once they figured out the issue and started working towards solving it, everything clicked for me. Again, we have an unlikely pairing with Rainer and Stamets having to work together in the end. Also, also, sorry, also, Rainer can learn the true meaning of friendship. It has definitely a character development and nostalgia episode more than played into the season storyline, but I'm not mad about it. Agreed. Agreed. I will tell you, oh, I guess I am going to close things out tonight. I guess I haven't done the limerick in a while with Tara. Great episode, chock full with delicious Easter eggs. Somehow I'm a total sucker for time travel episodes. We got a lot of that tonight. A lot of people mm -hmm. love time travel mm -hmm. episodes. Um, but I got annoyed by the transporter exception trope. Yeah, it's been, we didn't talk about that. That's mm -hmm. like a lot of the time how they, you know, are able to you know, Which not be actually is one of the rare things that makes sense in Star Trek. Yeah, it's that's true. true. It is true. Yep. Um, nonetheless, I got over it. Lots of fun. Great character development for Rainer. And now this week's very rushed limerick 504 face the strange. There's a Krenum time bug on discovery, uncovering mole and Laox sophisticated skullduggery. Burnham confronts her younger identity. A classic Vulcan defense provides a harmless remedy. Now everyone toast Arium with a Vesper Martini. Make sure that Vesper nice. Martini is ice cold. Ice cold. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That does it for this one, folks. That was really fun. And we did it. I did say it was going to be a short show, and I wasn't wrong. Yeah. Sub 130, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. I know. We're like, we're like. 
doing our own time travel. I don't have a joke there. Um, we are back next week for episode 505. Don't think I could say the title yet. Uh, so I won't. Oh, it's um, a good one. It is a really good. Wait, did you watch it? No, but you said so. Okay, no, I but I know so. I know what's going on in 505. Yeah, I've not so, watched it, but I know what's going on. <laughs> so I teased y'all last week saying that this was a really good episode. Well, next week is also a really good oh, episode. Boy. So put your pants back on and uh I don't I don't know. I'm tired. Let's get this one out of here. <laughs> for MC, for Hawk, for Giraffe, for Cyclops. I am Julian, <laughs> live long and prosper, Mushroom, sarcastic Vulcan salute, good night. Thanks for beaming into our podcast today. If you want to keep the hailing frequencies open, you can subscribe on Apple and Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. Like what you hear? Put in a good word with Starfleet and leave us a five-star review.